I've had this C64 marked as black screen sitting in a pile for a while now and I think it's time to fix it. Hello and welcome to the Retro Chicken Forum. If you want more content about vintage computers, make sure to hit that subscribe button right now and keep watching. First, I want to confirm that this unit with this funky switch indeed produces a black screen. Let's connect it and turn it on. And indeed, we do have a black screen. Even though the video sync signal is present because the monitor sees it. Let's see next if the dead test shows any signs of life. And after more than 10 seconds, which is how much time the test needs to start, there's nothing on screen. With no info from the dead test, the top suspects are the PLA, the CPU, the VIC and the RAM. Let's now open the C64 up and take a look under the hood. Disconnect everything and make it ready for diagnosing. This board is a 250-425. And wow, look at the switch from the inside. Someone put in quite a bit of work to make those pin extensions. Let's start diagnosing by using the thermo hand first. Let it run for a minute and feel all the chips with my fingers. Let's see if any of them get too hot. The CPU and the SID are quite warm, but the PLA is hot. Now, the PLAs can run quite hot, but this one here seems to be way too hot. Could it be the most common problem with these boards, a faulty PLA? After filling the chips, the PLA is now the first suspect. Commodore produced a manual called the Diagnostic Instruction and Troubleshooting Manual. It's a good idea to follow its directions and diagnose per its instructions, so I'll do just that. So next I'll measure the voltages. The first regulator, 21 volts DC on the input, almost 12 on the output, good. And the second one, 12 on the input and almost 5 on the output, so good as well. This is the internally rectified 5 volts DC, designated CAN and used by the VIC chip. Now let's take a peek at the voltages on the other side of the board. This one here is the 5 volts DC that comes directly from the PSU. And we got 10 volts AC as well, so that's good. Next I'll check the reset signal. It should be low when powering the system up and after a second or two go high. That's exactly what happens, so we're good. Now let's see the VIC. This older VIC uses two voltages. The first one is almost 5 volts, which is correct. And the second one is almost 12, which is also correct. Next, the frequencies. Note that this version of the troubleshooting manual has the frequencies for the American NTSC variant, while I'll be measuring the European PAL first. The IN signal, 7.881 MHz, good. And second, the color signal, 17.73 MHz, also good. The CPU is up next. Input clock, 985 kHz, good. Output clock, 985 kHz as well, good. So far so good. I mentioned the troubleshooting manual, but you don't need to follow it by the letter as it will become evident in a moment. Namely, while looking for the problem I of course had to power the board on and off many times and at one point, lo and behold, we have a purple screen. This is now another significant indicator of a faulty PLA, making it now the prime suspect. But it didn't end there, at one point a white screen popped up and a blue one and an orange one it's definitely the PLA but I will anyway take some measurements to confirm this from the electrical side as well the troubleshooting manual covers this under the system ROM and IO section so we'll jump straight there I'll compare this PLA and a good one side by side to really see the difference in signals here they are, the bad one on the left and a good one on the right. I'll simply go through all the pins that are listed in the troubleshooting manual and see what comes out.
All right, I've seen enough. This PLA is gone. Let me see if I have a replacement ready and then I'll desolder the old one and install a new one. First, get the board out of the case. Inspect it a bit. Could use a bit of cleaning. It's a bit bent. Could also use a bit of tweaking here and there. Get the desoldering gun. Lift the chip very carefully, being mindful of the traces. I don't want to pull out any of them. Thank you for your service. You can continue your service by being a decorative piece. Get a new socket. At the moment this is the only PLA replacement I have available. It's an X-Gal socket. Solder, brush, and push it in place. All done. Let's see where we're at. Is it all fixed or could there be anything else? Connect it and turn it on. Yes, it works! Awesome! Let's prep it for further testing. Clean the contacts. I'll check the cartridge port first. Which is working fine. Before putting everything back together, I should take care of this Franken switch as well. I'll remove it while applauding the ingenuity of the previous fixer because, well, you work with what you have. Let's simply install a brand new one. Here's the result. The old one and the new one. Next, clean the keyboard and the case a bit. Also get some new screws as there were two missing and put it all back together. Next test the keyboard. Works fine. Then the joystick ports also work fine. A fancy tune to hear the SID. Sounds good. The cassette port is working fine as the tape card is loading nicely. Next, let's check the serial port. It works great. To conclude, I'll load a random game with a proper cassette deck. Gentlemen, start your engines. That's it for this episode, thanks for watching, goodbye from the Retro Chicken Farm and I'll see you in the next one.